Many people believe or think or suspect that there would be a time where robots would evolve their own intelligence and take over humans. Or, let me rephrase it for you, can we really think of machines as our equals? It really depends on how you would like to perceive this phenomena. Think along these lines. A machine will never be conscious of its actions. It may play a game of chess, but it wouldn't know how it's playing. It wouldn't know what competing is, neither would it have the sense that it is competing with the person in order to win. Which brings us to the subject of our today's video, Can Humans Win a War Against Artificial Intelligence? But before I start this video, please hit the like button, turn on that little notification bell so that each time I upload a new disruptive technology education video, YouTube can notify you. Also, subscribe to our channel to help us grow and educate more people on disruptive technologies. Before I start this video, let me put a little perspective. This video is a bit different from my usual work. I'm taking a pretty diverse approach to the usual. Um, for our today's subject, I would be using theories from philosophy, psychology, physics and technology to put my views forward. Reason being to present a very comprehensive and conclusive answer to the question. Nevertheless, where does this idea of machines winning over humans even come from? And if you think it's new, then don't be delusional. In England, towards the end of the 18th century, when our industrial society started to emerge, groups of workers staged the first rebellions who were furious and believed that mechanical looms were robbing them of their jobs. But for most of the humans and their activities that have been discovered so far by the scientists, logic can be dangerous because logic is often contradictory to ordinary common sense. Common sense is based on assumptions, social acceptance and absolutely no facts. Logic doesn't recognize emotions. In fact, logic disregards any facts based on human emotions. One of the famous physicists called Niels Bohr said it very well to one of his students. And I quote him, stop being so logical and start thinking. The point I'm trying to make is that life is changing and contradiction is central to it. Being humans, we don't always recognize the facts because we create a world that takes note of the facts and we have also learned over the time to navigate the world we have already created. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, could only not be applied in a moral manner. Not because there are any inherent design fault in algorithms, but because moral life itself is not algorithmic. Let's assume for a while that robots do evolve their own intelligence as expressed by Isaac Asimov in his Three Laws of Robotics. Having said that, many people believe or think or suspect that there would be a time where robots would evolve their own intelligence and take over humans. If this concept excites you, then I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Um, in my opinion, that's never going to happen, at least not theoretically, because unless we do not experience such events happening practically, our only point of argument relies upon the available theory and certainly not speculations or fantasies. Even so, why can't machine take over humans for one simple reason discovered by Roger Clark? Exploring the possibility of the idea that machines could take over humans, he finds out that 
exercising the laws grounded in unhuman logical structures of thought is almost impossible in a human-built world. In more simpler word, what this means is that since humans are not logical creatures, therefore logically built structures of thoughts is impossible to be exhibited or implied in human world. Clark believed that it's not logically possible, not because there was any intrinsic design fault in the algorithms, but as I said earlier, because moral life itself is non-algorithmic. In the same line of argument, we should also remind ourselves that war is our invention. It is what we do as species and we do it very well. My point here is that the war is an invention of humans and not the machines. Hence, humans are motivated in a war and not machines. War happens when humans choose to break their own moral rules of thumb, which is we are responsible for the choices we make. Therefore, for a human, there is a possible moral standing for a war. Machines or robots, on the other hand, do not choose whether to follow their program or not. Therefore, consistency is their strong characteristics and not ours. We build machines to perform a sequence of operations that follow logically on from one another. Obviously, machines can do this faster than us for a reason. Any basic theory or axioms defined by words through which a pure logic is drawn is a strong characteristic of machines and not of humans. Let's take another very humanly aspect in consideration here. For us, living ethically has never been about how best to make best of the good. Rather, living ethically for us involves the rule of right behavior. For example, how we should treat the prisoners of war. It has involved cultivating ethics and refusing to perform actions that we cannot reunite with our conscience or sense of self. Living ethically for that reason is rational and not logical. It involves balancing the claims of a variety of goods such as um, winning ethically as against winning by suspending the rules and calculating how different values should be applied in circumstances where there may often be no single idea of wrong or right. Having said that, I would now focus on why, in my opinion, and based on some basic research that I could conduct, humans can win a war against artificial intelligence. There are at least three reasons for this. First and the foremost and the most obvious is that machine intelligence such as it is, is motivationless. It lacks motivation, absolutely. Humans have motivated intelligence thanks to the natural selection. We are commanded by a mixed bag of, we are commanded by a mixed bag of emotions instincts and drivers that are programmed into us so that we can reproduce. Natural selection is what gives us goals such as we want to win or we want to dominate and we want to control others. We have to balance those, those goals with our need to survive, hence choosing actions that are life-sustaining. And this is what machines are missing out. Machines are not motivated by any inborn desire to sustain their own existence or to reproduce. And because we wouldn't assign intentions to machines, we do not need to engage in a social relationship with them. Let me introduce or remind you of an interesting and popular theory known as orders of intentionality. This term helps us think about how social intelligence works. As we know, social intelligence is the ability to get along with people in general. Obviously, we have evolved social intelligence for a reason, to be able to cooperate and communicate with others. 
For example, if I believe you to know something, then I can cope with one order of intentionality. If I believe that you believe that I know something, then I can cope with two orders of intentionality. If I believe that you believe that my business partner believes that I know something, then I can cope with three orders of intentionality. Yes, it's a little hard to follow, but you can just barely make sense out of it. We humans regularly encounter at least three orders in everyday life. It is also believed that actually we can cope up up to five. In other words, an entity or a person, as in our case of discussion, a machine that has no motivation is not the one that can be networked into social life on other than the most basic terms. Humans are not programmed to act in predictable ways. Our powers of natural selection let us to adapt to our environments in ways that is almost not possible to always anticipate or predict. Secondly, machines are not only motivationless, they are also non-teleological. Teleological questions include basic questions such as what am I doing on this battlefield? Or why am I taking this risk? Or what is the entire conflict about? Am I willing to die? And if so, for what cause? A religion, a country, or my family? All of these are aspirational and involve a theological language, one that produces a sense of purpose or an end. Let me remind you one more time. The greatest human desire is not to be used so much as to be useful. As an example, young jihadists are often only too willing to surrender their lives in the hope of being useful to others because being useful is what justifies martyrdom. An emotional response to life that secularists have particular difficulty coming to terms with. Machines may be programmed to self-destruct. For them, it's not a choice. Martyrdom is simply not in their emotional register. Thirdly, we understand our own power to be determined by rationality, not logic. It is the reason and not the logic that plays a central role in our lives, though we must not fall into the trap of thinking like our ancestors, that it is the human essence, let alone conclude that we are always rational, yet less reasonable than we certainly are not. And even when we try to apply reason, openly the result is often disastrous, or as they say, common sense turned upside down. Interesting fact that we tend to overlook all the time is we are not as rational as we like to think. We are still prone to all the problems that we have inherited from the mental toolkit of our distant ancestors. Problems such as confirmation bias, cognitive conflicts and premature cognitive closure. And we do so for a very valid reason. As experts say, these problems were probably programmed into us not to help us make better decisions, but to bond with the tribe against enemies, real or imaginary. Which is why we continue to jump to conclusions and overreact and frame our decisions in terms of our own communal or tribal experiences. Let's conclude this discussion. Artificial intelligence is among the many trending technologies that promise to change the face of warfare for years to come. Today, predictions regarding whether or not humans can win the race against AI are led by two large groups, with much uncertainty in between anyway. The most optimistic paints a happy future. The machines will take away all the hard work, and humans will simply live the life, be creative, allowing us to explore our spiritual powers. The other, more pessimistic group claims that the industrial revolution we are going through now is remarkable and that we haven't a clue what challenges lie ahead of us. But whether you want to fall into the pessimist or the optimist category, regardless, reality is there's some really significant development going around us. 
describing the immense power and possibilities of AI, warning those who choose to fall behind the AI race. As an example, the US Department of Defense has duly created the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center in the hopes of winning the AI battle. Futuristics has visions of AI enabling autonomous systems to conduct missions, achieving sensor fusion, automating tasks, and making better, quicker decisions than humans. AI is improving rapidly and someday in the near future, probably, those goals may be achieved. In the meantime, AI's impact will be in the most subtle, dull and monotonous tasks performed by our military in uncontested environments. In my opinion, theoretically, machines lack motivation to win war. Humans, on the other hand, are usually self-sufficient and absolutely self-motivated to do so. If you liked my content, please help me grow by subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.